Mission Impossible movie review. When on an espionage mission involving a so-called knock list, which has all the personal information of secret agents, Ethan Hunt is the one survivor of the espionage team, and the possible mission force disavows him, and he now has to find a way to prove his innocence, and the audience isn't entirely sure if they trust him either, and that kind of becomes the theme for the entire thing. You're very unsure of who, you know, to trust, and a lot of the way this actually plays out like a true classic spy thriller, you know, Three Days of the Condor, The Jackal, that kind of thing. Brian De Palma directs it beautifully. You know, he is a pretty visual director, loves to play with the camera, and that really comes across. We have a an extended POV shot uh, sequence and just some nice little, you know, tricks. He throws in a bunch of Dutch angles, but I wouldn't quite say he overuses them, and he builds tension and creates suspense like you would not believe. It is an incredibly thrilling film from start to finish, and it never really gets over the top, although it does come close near the very end. Some would say it goes over the top with the climax, which is also the only scene in this that I would actually classify as an action scene. The rest is just, you know, tension and suspense. One great example of the tension in the film is the now famous scene of breaking into a vault where Tom Cruise is suspended from the ceiling and has to, you know, hack into a computer and be careful not to drop the rest of the way. Which is just, you know, it's an iconic scene for a reason. It is fantastic and it will leave you on the edge of your seat, as will the most of this film, really. You know, the plot develops nicely throughout, and it keeps throwing curveballs your way. You know, it keeps surprising you and has some really nice twists, but without them being, you know, just unbelievable. You know, they're, some are, you know, they're, they're very unexpected, but afterwards you realize why that kind of thing works or why it was like that, you know. I don't think there's really anything in the movie that doesn't make sense, you know. You can sit down, you can have all the pieces of the puzzle, assemble it, look at it, study it closely. I honestly don't think there's anything that doesn't hold up. The... The acting is quite good. You know, with this sort of thing, you really need people who can keep this sort of, you know, pretty much everyone Ethan comes across, you're not sure if you can trust them or not, you know, and that takes real craft, you know, real acting chops, and, you know, they, they really have, and, you know, they do bring in some great actors as well, you know, with the supporting cast of Ming Rames and Jean Reno, and, you know, people like John Voight. It's just, you know, really, really great acting. The effects at times are a bit suspect, but, you know, I believe uh, some of it, almost definitely, is CGI, and the film is from 1996. CGI wasn't perfected back then, so, you know. Obviously, that is the result.
the dialogue is phenomenal. You know, well delivered and just really clever lines. And there are some nice, you know, this is the proper kind of spy thriller. By which, I mean, it doesn't go into too much of being an action film, you know. Again, you know, we're, we're talking Forsyth kind of, you know, it is at that level, I would say. With, you know, we have these almost like mental poker matches, sort of, between, you know, do you trust this and are you sure what what you think is the case is actually the case and you know, things like that and it's just it's excellent you know I suppose that is pretty much all I should say without giving anything away it's not a gadget heavy film and it it isn't too much like the Bond franchise you know, for better or for worse, you know, it depends on if you like the Bond franchise, of course. But Ethan Hunt is a very different character than James Bond. And, you know, and that is obviously a good thing, you know, because otherwise why not just make it a Bond movie? But it is a very different film than a Bond film also. I don't know if this really should have become a franchise, and certainly not in the way that it has, with them just becoming straight-up action films. You know, the the sequels did not need to be Mission Impossible films, and this film really didn't need a sequel, though I will admit that it does leave the door open for one and several. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.